Dude, these are my notes on the truck that I took just while we were there. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm ready. <laughs> I, get, I got all the answers. Inject it into my veins. I'm super ready for this. Ask me anything. Quiz me, quiz me, quiz me. I'm going to call you Chat GP Marquez <laughs> <laughs> and just start asking it questions. What is up, people of the internet? Welcome back to another episode of the Waveform Podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Marquez. And I'm David. And today we've got quite a bit of news to talk about, new products, new videos, new stuff, new developments. It's all happening because it's Techvember and that's just the way it goes. Also, uh, some other random stuff like Cybertruck. Mm -hmm. we've, got, we've got everything you need to know about Cybertruck. Which just you. today, the embargo dropped on that. So yes. we've got a, there's probably gonna be a video out and there's Big a lot of other stuff, so. So all the details, all the official stuff. Also, and wait, quick correction. Yeah. This is coming out Friday, Friday December 1st. Correct. Tech so it's tech Not tech -vember. Tech -sember? Tech -sember. It doesn't roll off the tongue. Yeah, well, no, but... it feels weird. Anyway. We'll stick with it. Detect. Detect. <laughs> I don't know. Mm. Detect. Sure. Frosty the tech man. <laughs> but also, let's start off with a... Uh, this dbrand story and case defy mm, story yeah because i think it's actually really funny big drama energy going on it's here. pretty funny <laughs> yeah. so and and i got a heads up about this before but basically it's all out there now zach jerry rig everything made a video detailing it yep the high level overview is dbrand has made a bunch of cases with zach with the teardown skin so a bunch of skins that look like the inside of a phone but they're like cleaned up and have a bunch of cool easter eggs and stuff yeah and then Casetify, a huge case company, decided to also make a similarly themed but different named teardown skin for their stuff and yeah. cases for their stuff and uh, just straight ripped a bunch of dbrand's designs yep. in a way where it's not just a straight rip, but you can tell they tried to hide they some of it. They slightly photoshopped stuff out, they did a but they job. missed so many Easter eggs that made it clearly the dbrand skin. Yeah, so that's the high level overview, but the, the details are so much more oh, funny yeah. because the way Zach's video presented all of it was so kind, so nice. And the funny is <laughs> more stuff came out after the video went live yeah. that people realized that they had been ripping skins for a while before that. Yeah, so I think basically some some intern or some artist at Case Defy. Probably an intern. Was like hired, they probably were told, hey, we need some cool new ideas. And they went, right click, save as, <laughs> Literally. import into Photoshop, <laughs> tweak some things, yeah. and then went, look at this cool thing I came up with. And they were like, whoa. Yeah. This looks very similar to what Dbrand did. Yeah. Are you sure it's far away enough? And they're like, no, trust me, it's not the same. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. So the funny thing about, about this is that originally they launched a line of skins called Inside Parts. Um, That's what it's called. Yeah. Well, that was the original lineup. Mm -hmm. So this, this was launched a long time ago. <laughs> And they got not in trouble, but people started making fun of them, including Dbrand, like, quote, tweeted them on Twitter and then made a bunch of fun of them because the inside part skin was taken from one phone. And no matter what phone you bought the skin for, right. it was the insides of the one phone. Right. So it was the incorrect inside of most of the phones that the skin Which was for. an iPhone, I believe. Right? Yeah. That's so hilarious. Like, yeah. So you had like an A15 processor on your Galaxy S23 Yeah, Ultra. Which is like fine for a lot of people, but if you're willing to dig into the weeds and get nerdy about it, you can do way better than that. Yeah. 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 So then they came out with a new line called Inside Out, yeah. which did represent the right device per case. Uh, but then Dbrand noticed that they probably didn't do their own work of making them themselves because of all of the uh, little Easter eggs. There was stuff like 11.11.11, .11 which was Dbrand's founding date of the company. Whoops. <laughs> there was a R0807, which is supposed to spell robots because, you know, Dbrand robots and Casetify has Case nothing Defy. to do with that. Also and they, forgot to take that They out. even had the the quote, glass is glass and glass breaks. And it's like, do you really think that that's going to be part of the inside of a phone? <laughs> huge, huge miss there. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, big miss. I think that the number one thing I learned actually about this is how much effort it takes to make a teardown skin. Yeah, I was Instead just going to say that. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. The process that they that they detailed was, was it's impressive. You obviously can just take the back off of a phone and, you know, put it up against the scanner, scan it and just like print that mm -hmm. if you really wanted to you could do that too it's way but, uglier <laughs> yeah it's way uglier and they wanted to give it some pops of color and some high resolution like detail and some cool looks so they're adapting the 
actual accurate inside of the back of the phone and then adding some things yeah. like an exposed wireless charging coil for a touch of copper or maybe like adding some text like you said some easter eggs and some fun stuff boosting contrast in certain places yeah. etc yeah. so they they really go above and beyond to make those which is cool yeah so dbrand is uh issuing a federal lawsuit against case Defy in the 10 uh eight figures which could be between 10 million dollars and 100 million dollars that's a big company. Which is a lot of money. Caseify is a big company. And then Caseify uh, went on Twitter. and oh, they were, this is horrible. <laughs> they were like, we are investigating reports of this. We have always been a bastion of, uh, what did they Originality. say? Originality. <laughs> Which, what? okay. And then <laughs> it gets deeper. It gets worse. Don't worry. And then uh, someone pointed out that they had a line of X-Raid skins as well. That people realize they had literally just taken from iFix's website. Hmm. They right clicked, save as, as again for iFixit scans. Nice. Yeah. And then uh, iFixit made a statement on Twitter as well that was roasting them too. And it just became this whole thing. And it's like bastion of originality when you're just stealing everyone's stuff. If you have to call yourself a bastion of originality, you probably aren't one. Yeah. I think that's probably... We've always been a bastion of originality. Yeah, so the same day that Dbrand launched the lawsuit, um, which they made a whole media event of, by the way, they sent people emails saying we're suing Oh, yeah, they're literally using it as press. Oh, yeah. 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 Like th- like us talking about it on the podcast, is they're probably watching this like, yes, yeah. yes, keep going, keep talking about it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah. they're, they're getting a, a lot out of this for sure. And they launched a new set of skins, a new set of X-ray skins with, yeah. uh, with Zach, with a 50 micron X- X-ray machine, which it's is like very, very fine event. detail. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. Good for so. them. Good for them. Oh, cha- disclaimer, D-Brand is a channel sponsor on the main channel. Right. I don't know if you have heard that before, <laughs> yeah. but just... Just so we get it Sounds up. Sounds familiar. Yeah, you've yeah. you've probably heard that said before, but just in case you didn't know. I think we got to stop trusting these companies that end in FI. You know, like Sp- Spotify hmm. worked sort of, you know, what? whatever. <laughs> that Burger Fi, Shopify, confusing. Fi. Sponsor Shopify. Are they sponsoring I us use today? Google Did Fi. I just mess that up? <laughs> not, Sorry. Maybe not today. <laughs> I don't know. I use Google Fi. Oh, F-I. It's called Google Project Fi now. Or Google Fi Wireless now, actually. They changed the name again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Anyway, uh, next story is actually kind of a little bit of a tip to a special episode that we have coming up. Um, hmm. I think it got... They, they posted an Instagram thing of it, so I think that people know that we podcasted with them. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So we did a podcast with... Uh, which is going to be airing fairly soon. I'm going to beep that. But Google is deploying a new geothermal energy project that is now up and running in Nevada. Uh, This is part of their kind of like clean energy by 2030 initiative. And, you know, we go back and forth about what are these companies actually doing? Are they just buying credits? Are they doing this? And it's, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of detail baked in there. Uh, But they partnered with this company called Fervo to do this new type of geothermal energy plant where effectively they've got Hot Rocks out in Nevada. Okay, Hot which, Rocks. Which is also a name of a Spoon album that's really good, just so you know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Go on. Okay, anyway, they've got these really hot rocks. Uh-huh. They crack, uh, they make cracks in the rocks, and then they, <laughs> well, this is real. They make cracks in the rocks, and then they put a closed loop system in there. They pour water into the cracks. The water turns to steam, turns turbines, That water eventually turns back in, or that steam basically eventually turns back into water, falls back into the rocks, turns back into steam, and uh, it powers pretty much uh, Google's entire energy centers, um, energy centers, data centers throughout uh, Reno and Las Vegas. It generates 3.5 megawatts of power, which is enough to service about 2,625 homes. Um, but it's running all their data centers in that part of Nevada, and they want to eventually expand it. This is a small project right now because it's a brand new type of geothermal energy production. Hmm. But uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. They have some really awesome like aerial photos of the whole setup and like how it works and everything. And I think that it just it makes a lot of sense to take more advantage of the natural energy sources that we already have all the time. Yeah, renewable, as renewable well. energy. Yeah, definitely. Which yeah. a lot of companies like Apple will make these like videos of all these solar farms and stuff that they have. And right. instead of buying credits, it would be great if we actually just switched over to these renewable energy. That sources. is one huge distinction between like so many of these claims that we should 
where we'll talk about, but yeah. it's the difference between, oh, we want to be net neutral to the environment, so we're going to pollute a lot, but then pay for someone else to not pollute. Right. A difference between that and actually changing the way you operate to not pollute so much. Yeah. So I can't help but be happy every time I see some actually useful, meaningful changes like this. So. Yeah. Also, the picture is super cool. Yeah, the pictures are really cool. I, I saw a story today that said some airline was paying a ton of money to put like 100 tons of CO2 underground. Mm. And I'm like, that just doesn't sound mm. like it's a good long-term strategy. What if we take it out of the air <laughs> and put it underground? And put it over there. I feel like the earth is just going to explode at some point. So I don't know enough about how that works, but yeah. yeah. I think as we edged closer to 2030, we're probably going to see a lot of these companies releasing new renewable energy projects like this, which is pretty cool. Um, and hopefully they expand this a little bit more. Obviously, you need to be in an area that does geothermal stuff. Um, so Nevada is a good spot to kind of pilot yeah. it in. Yeah. If you're in Kearney, I suggest wind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I suggest lots of wind stuff because yeah. it's windy all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, probably last little story before trivia in the ad break, uh, this kind of just dropped through yesterday, but Apple card is dropping Goldman Sachs. So I've had this Apple card and I knew it was Goldman Sachs, but I also am aware of Goldman Sachs's terrible reputation because <laughs> yeah. as soon as this news dropped, everyone was like, thank God, yeah. this, this, it's about time. So now yeah. there's all these rumors about who they might switch to or what they right. might do next, but also Apple who said this in the Slack? Apple has enough cash on hand to just be a They bank. could, and they have this thing called Apple Financial Services that Where, they yeah. use for the, I think, the high-yield savings accounts or something like that. Where you can buy things interest-free? Is that uh, a thing? Or is that a different company? I think that's a different company. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, B&H has that, or not interest-free, but B&H has a thing that they use Synchrony for, which is actually one of the companies that they are potentially fielding to be the Apple Car backer. Uh, we're on B&H, which is a camera store in New York City, giant camera store in New York City. Mm -hmm. If you use that credit card, the benefit is that you don't have to pay sales tax. They cover the sales tax, hmm. which is pretty nice, because B&H used to not charge sales tax, and then the laws changed and they had to. So then they figured out a way to get around it. Anyway, Goldman Sachs, for people that are not aware, traditionally was a bank that only uh, lent money to extremely rich people who are going to like either s start new wings of their corporation or buy a mega yacht or something like that. Tight. And so them getting into the like consumer banking business was already pretty weird. And clearly they are not doing it well. I personally think because the Apple card as a card is not a good general credit card. It's not that great. It's only 1% cash back on everything, and then you get, I think, 3% on use, Apple products. And on Apple Pay, when you use Apple Pay. Right. Wait, through anything? Through two, Apple two, Pay? Two, when two, I tap two. to pay, it's 2% everywhere. Oh, 2%? Yeah. There's just a lot of more general like Visa cards that give you better cash back in most yeah. categories. Yeah, so Goldman Sachs says that it's lost $3 billion from the Apple card deal since Dang. 2020 which is pretty wild. Um, so they're they trying to it. pull out of the consumer banking market altogether at this point. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another whoops moment. Yeah. So there have been uh, rumors that they're fielding American Express or possibly Synchrony Bank to be the new backer. The next um, victim. Yeah, <laughs> the next victim. Because obviously I don't think Apple is going to kill the product. Like I don't think Apple very rarely kills products mm -hmm. and killing a credit card would be a big blow for them. So I can't really see that happening. Interesting. Yeah. If this was Google. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it would have been gone <laughs> this months already happened. ago. Yeah. This already happened. Remember the Google Wallet physical card? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wait, this literally, oh. This literally, and well, it, it wasn't a credit card. It was a debit card, basically. How fast did that get nuked? <laughs> Within like a year or two, maybe two years. I remember I was so depressed when it got nuked. I was like, I use this all the time. 2016. The original Google Wallet. Now, wow. not the rebranded, rebranded, now again, Google Wallet. Wow, that did happen. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's been a long few years. Yeah. So. Well, that's a good that's a good break to take. We we have a lot to talk about with this cyber truck. Yes. So let's take a quick break before that. Okay. And of course that means we should do trivia. 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 All right. Because uh, we're talking about geothermal energy and everything like that. This oh. <laughs> is going to be more science based. Oh Some nice. Mung beans? Some mung bean questions. Uh, not about mung beans. <laughs> <laughs> the top layer of our planet is called the crust, and it only goes 25 miles deep. That's where all the hot rocks are. 
I That's did. where the Spoon album is. I did know that. So <laughs> everything I'm, I'm on board so far, I know this thing. <laughs> the other layers are called the mantle yep. and the what. Ah. Oh. <laughs> I know this. Do you one. know this? Yeah. Wow. Do you take geo whatever in college or high school? What? Geology? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was like geophysics or geoastro. I think this is pre geology. Geology. <laughs> yeah. Geology. No, this is pre. This is pre geology where they were just like, here's what pre geology. The like. This is before the Earth existed. No, this is like fifth grade or whatever. Ancient aliens. This would be on. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? You had geology class in fifth grade. No, because they ta- they told us this before we learned the rest of geology. Oh. Just about the earth and the yeah, crust. They're like, by the, the way, part and the cheese. We have a crust and a mantle. A mantle. And a ah. beep. Wow. The mantle is usually where I hang all of my, <laughs> oh my God. things on the earth. We have to end it. Anyway, we, we'll have be right to, back. we have to stop. <laughs> we'll be back. Okay. All right. Welcome back. We uh we are joined at the big table by Ellis. I made it. The and the reason here. <laughs> the reason we're doing this is because we got back earlier today from shooting a video with the Tesla Cybertruck. This Correct. this is officially the week of the d- the first deliveries. There's going to be ten sometime right before uh, this recording drops the first delivery event mm-hmm. where there's rumored to be I don't know ten or fifteen Cybertrucks being delivered. Yeah. But the point is they're going to be out on the streets. The official delivery specs and new information about what you're actually going to buy instead of just the prototype truck is revealed. And so now we get to react to that stuff. And I'm also one of three people outside of Tesla to have driven the Cybertruck. And wow, do I have some thoughts on driving the thing. Hmm. So, Ellis, you're with me for a lot of that recording. David, you have thoughts, probably questions about it. You have not seen the Cybertruck. I have many questions. I I just want to background it with this. Yeah. Going into it, I'm sure a lot of us were skeptical. Not sure if it was real, not sure how close it would be to the actual concept truck. Now that I've actually seen it, driven it, used it, I have several really big praises of it and also several really big negatives. To okay. It. So <laughs> there are there are definitely big positives and big negatives. I think let's just start with the numbers because they're the things that everyone wanted to know about uh, as it got revealed. All of the numbers on paper except zero to 60 are worse than they promised. Oof. And this is the first time that's true about a Tesla. Yikes. I feel like they always are usually able to deliver what they promise just really late. This time, straight up, all the numbers are worse. So those numbers are, uh, there are three trims, a single motor rear wheel drive, a dual motor all wheel drive, and a triple motor powertrain. The triple motor being the highest end one that we tested, it's dual motors in the re- in the back with torque vectoring and a single permanent, mag- permanent magnet motor up front. Can you uh, explain torque vectoring for people who don't know, don't know cars like yeah, myself? Yeah, it's AKA essentially just David, you're yeah. able to independently control the rear wheels. So if you go around a turn, you can independently slow down the inside wheel with one motor while you accelerate the other outside oh. wheel with the other motor. It's like what the F1 cars did, right? Exactly. You know when you're on the BART and you go around a corner and you hear that terrible screeching noise? Yeah. That's because the BART trains barely have differentials and <laughs> torque vectoring is not happening. Okay. It's tough. Okay. Got it. So here's the numbers on the truck. Uh, they originally promised 500 miles of range on the highest end truck. Yeah. The highest end truck has 340 miles of range. Oof. They originally promised. And when you say highest end, do you mean like most range? Most efficient, most range. Okay. Yeah. They originally promised... Um, 340 from 500? <laughs> yeah, they promised 14,000 pounds of towing capacity. It yeah. has 11,000 pounds of towing capacity. Yikey. Uh, they promised... A 2.9 second zero to 60. It is a 2.7 second zero to 60. So okay. it's actually faster. Interesting. They promised $69,900 for the triple motor. It is $100,000. Uh, yeah. Uh, so that's the highest end Cybertruck triple motor, $100,000, 340 miles of range. And that will ship alongside the dual motor as the first ones out the factory. And the single motor rear wheel drive will be later. The dual motor, we're thinking, again, this is pre-event, but it's probably around 75 to 85 grand. Okay. So that's that's on paper. The truck itself is also about 5% smaller in every dimension than the original truck. Huh. We went up with an F-150 Lightning to go shoot this, 
and it is a little bit smaller than the F-150 Lightning. Whereas, really? The, yeah, the original truck was about the same size. Interesting. That being said, it's still the same six-foot bed size as an F-150. It just has a much smaller front trunk. Very, oh. very small, shallow front trunk. So I can't lie in it with Brandon this time? You can't lie down in it. The Rivian has a bigger front trunk. The mm. F-150 has a bigger front trunk. Even the small um, GMC Hummer EV has a bigger front trunk. A little tiny Hummer EV. Yeah, but is you that... could fit two carry-on bags. The Hummer EV is still bigger than all of these cars, right? The Hummer EV is gigantic. It's huge, yeah. <laughs> it has a 200-something kilowatt-hour battery Okay. and weighs 9,000 pounds. The Hummer EV. The Hummer EV. Okay. The Cybertruck has, every one of them will have a 123-kilowatt-hour battery and will weigh about 6,800 pounds. So it's lighter than the Rivian. Oh, which how, is many, impressive. how much does the Rivian weigh? About 7,500 pounds. Okay. So Can you just know all this off the top of your head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. A lot of numbers. Just to, but like, this is the first time we're learning. In the tech review space. Yeah, but this is the specs. This is the specs. first time we actually get the specs. Yeah. So again, some positive and negative in there. I have a question. Sure. So you said the max price was 100,000. That's the st roughly starting price of the triple motor. How much is the cheapest, cheap, cheap one? We don't know yet. TBD. Oh, okay, interesting. We'd be guessing, but I don't think it's going to be anywhere near the originally promised 39900 <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Probably Do you think they'll be... reveal it at the event? I don't think so. I okay. think they're going to start with the dual and triple, and to... I think we'll find out months from now. To be fair to Tesla, Rivian did the same thing and jacked the price by a lot. Exactly. So, okay. And there's a, there's been a bunch of talk about this, how like when this truck was first announced years ago, it launched into a very different world than we live in now. Yeah. which is like some totally. inflation, some new wars, like some totally different circumstances. So yeah, it's a different time to be building this thing. Yeah. But at least the product is done now and we can actually analyze the product itself. Yeah. So, Ellis, you've seen it in person. Yeah. What were your reactions to riding in it, seeing it, observing its reality? Ah! <laughs> I know. Okay, first I want to say, I know I've been clowning on this thing, on this very show uh -oh. for months. Uh -huh. I've been ridiculing the Cybertruck relentlessly. It's awesome. <laughs> it's so awesome, which I totally recognize that if the roads were exclusively full of Cybertrucks, the world would be objectively a worse and scarier and more dangerous place. <laughs> Mr. Let's All Ride Bikes. Very, yeah. But the 11-year-old boy in me thinks this thing totally kicks ass. <laughs> it's so cool. The okay. the photos it, you don't do it justice. That's the thing for me. When you see it in person, it's yeah. really striking and it's really beautiful and it's reflective in the perfect way. And does it feel? Does it actually feel well constructed and built? And doesn't feel like they just slapped a bunch of panels together that made it like no, no. Uh, it yeah. feels dirty, like dirty build. Wait, you think it feels like a dirty build? Yeah. Oh, I was going to say the opposite. Right, interesting. Well, let's hear. So there's debate. two parts of this. Yeah. One, it, just like the prototype truck, obviously is going to feel like a prototype, but the finished truck, I think, is a mix of were you not, like you weren't in a finished truck. We were in a finished truck. Oh, okay. So I so I took I rode the uh, the original prototype yeah, like four years ago for sure. And that thing, I it was at night. I couldn't even tell like what was made of what. It was just a quick glancing blow with the Cybertruck. Seeing this final one, it's like, okay, now everything is well formed and even panel gaps are pretty even, but this was the hand-selected truck to give to us to shoot on camera. Right. And even this truck had a couple slightly oddly shaped yeah. gaps. And the difference between the gaps on the truck we were testing versus the gaps on the 10 other trucks that I observed, Yeah. Which, to be fair, oh, weren't final ones. trucks, but I saw lots of other cyber trucks okay. and had lots of other differences in build. Yeah. So that's something I observed. And the other thing is I just like pulled up on the uh, the dashboard and like was just pulling on things and just feeling general materials. It's it's not great. It's like a Tesla. Yeah. It's fine. But it's fine. Right. It's yeah. not yeah. amazing. It's yeah. not horrible, but sure. it's, it's, it's a Tesla. It's a, fine. A piece fell off before we even started testing it. Like we arrived at the location we yeah. were going to shoot at and Vin was like, oh my God, this thing is like dangling off. The, what was yeah. it? And you like put it back on. It was on. just like a plastic a body plastic panel. Piece. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So yeah, it is what it is. Lots of other interesting things about it though. Yeah, let's go. So, okay. First of all, it's an 800 volt system which is good news for future proofing. That means all the V4 superchargers that Tesla's building with the oh. longer cable, it will charge even faster at those, probably over a thousand miles an hour, which is awesome. Well, uh, V3 charges over a thousand. V3 charges at about a thousand miles an hour yeah. for the Model 3, which yeah. is a 400 volt system. Uh, 
this new 800 volt system will likely oh. be even faster oh, when wow. you charge on V4s, okay. but it's also backwards compatible with V3s because it cleverly talks to the V3 charger, virtually splits it, actually physically splits it into two smaller battery packs and charges oh. them each. Oh, wow. At it's like the Oppo, fast rate. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oppo battery like system. <laughs> yeah. So I thought that was really clever. That's cool. That's cool. So it's an 800 volt so system. It'll charge a lot faster then, right? It'll charge a lot faster. It will also have uh, much less wire mass, uh, generally should be better at dissipation of heat. Exactly. Yeah. They, they uh was Wes the head engineer of the cyber? type of yeah, yeah the so, cyber truck. so we were like you know, the head engineer of the cyber truck product was there and he was explaining to us that a lot of the low voltage wires they actually stepped up to 48 volts <clears throat> so they could step down the wattage oh. and have a much thinner wire without having to worry about it burning out he said and this is a very tesla engineer thing to say he was like we were approaching the limits of how thin a wire could physically be you that know, seems oh, like oh, a bad idea okay you know it's like <laughs> that seems really like, like could break really easily no there's there are strong there's strong wires it's just okay. typically to push that much current through a wire you need a right. thicker wire and they're totally. able to use thin wires yeah now, which is okay cool okay neat cool um that much wattage because they dropped the current. Sorry, yes. Wattage. Yeah. Thank you. Y you like me, Ohm's Law, electrical engineering students? <laughs> Sorry, I'm an amateur. Wattage. This one's for you. Power. I was I, just I looking up say. the equation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Resistance, Is all it? that fun yeah. stuff. <laughs> okay. Here's my favorite thing about the truck. Okay. The number one most unique, most amazing thing about the Cybertruck is not the way it looks. It's the way it drives. Yep. It's crazy. Yep. It's Why? a crazy drive. Why? So first of all, it is... A ridiculously powerful truck, right? Triple motors. We're looking at 850-ish horsepower. Okay. It's off the line. It'll smoke. Name any sports car. It's going to beat it off the line in a straight line. That's just like the party trick that Tesla's good at. They've been yeah. good at that for a while. They know that'll sell people. The tug of war with an F-150, I'm sure it'll crush. Like, great. I'm used to that. That's fine. This is also Tesla's first steer-by-wire system. And they've combined it with this like squircle. It's not a yoke anymore. It's like a full round steering wheel, but like flattened, so like a rectangle. Oh. Um, but the amount of turn required by the wheel to turn the truck is tiny. Really? And there is up to 10 degrees of rear axle steering. And you can see it just looking at the rear wheel. When you turn it, the entire thing snaps and in at low speeds it like carves in a much smaller wheelbase. It's oh, a wow. tight turning radius. Huh. And at high speeds it actually changes wheels in the same direction. So you kind of glide from left to right. And <laughs> the entire turn, cool. like you know how when you go to make like a K turn, you you kind of do hand over hand and flip the what's wheel like, over what's a few a K times? Turn? If you uh if you need to turn around on oh. a two lane road oh, yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. too narrow, okay. you'd like pull over yeah. to back the right, up, back up to the left, and then go. back up. Yeah. Cybertruck's full lock turn is 170 degrees. Meaning you never have to go hand over hand. The entire turn is just this. And you're, it's so, it's, it's this crazy. Is terrible like audio because you have to see it to understand what yeah. I'm saying. Uh -huh. But sh long story short, it's the most nimble truck I've ever driven because you can really turn in ways it's that you feel like minute. you're just pivoting around the middle of the truck. It, huh. It's almost like you're using a joystick because a like full max rotation of the wheels literally is a a single hand over hand turn on the wheel. Like like in theory you could get all possible turning motions without ever removing your hands exactly. from 11 and 4. Yeah. Or a, a, well, you know the numbers that you're supposed to touch on two. the wheel. Nine, 10 and 2. 10 and 2. Yeah. 11 and 4 would be nuts. <laughs> That'd be a crazy way to drive. That's how I drive. <laughs> Huh. So it is It is a super, super nimble feeling truck. Okay. Much more so than the Rivian, than the F-150. And it just, yeah, it just makes it much more usable in small spaces. Yeah, which is so, important for a truck that large. It's important. <laughs> and it is It is a big truck, but it, it feels like I can place it more easily at low speeds, especially than even the smaller Rivian. So yeah. can I ask a question? Yeah. Do you think that, were you around other cars when you were driving this? Yep. Or were you like in an empty lot? Bunch of other cars. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. I was going to say, do you think it's because you didn't have like another car to like compare it to? No, the opposite. Because we pulled up in an F-150 Lightning, yeah. which is a truck we all love. Mm -hmm. Like we all think is like an objectively great truck. Mm -hmm. And then after we dropped the Cybertruck back off, we got back in that Ford and all of us were like, it's so loose. It's so boaty. Wow. It's so slow. Yeah. We were saying an F-150 slow. Lightning felt slow. Yeah. It was like, huh. it was 
do so for a lot of the driving i was in the back seat with all the audio gear and marquez was in the front seat driving right. and i'm monitoring all the stuff that truck feels unbelievably stiff and not in like a r- suspension sort of stiff like if marquez hit a corner it felt like i was back in the nevera it no. was psychotically stiff interesting yeah. and and you know to sort of see what it would do marquez would rock the wheel which because of the steer by wire means yeah. the car is doing steep oh, turns yeah. and you would just feel the the structural integrity of yeah. it from the back seat it was yeah. wild there's a few things i feel like we should bring up mm-hmm. there's a general ethos from this car that i sort of received from talking to engineers and and reading about it and going over this feature list where it's it's an unbelievably safe car for the driver yeah. It's yeah. not it's yeah. not Big entirely asterisk. clear, you know, how safe it is for other people on the road exactly. I mean, um it's to the very point large. <laughs> to the point where someone made of metal. at the factory was sort of like, yeah, you know, the the model we showed a f- five years ago or whatever didn't have side windows right. the government like made us put si- or not windows didn't have side mirrors the government made us put side mirrors on it but you can take them off if you want oh what? they just have to yeah. ship them stock with it yeah yes. and it was like legally but, so... and they were like but if you take them off you should put like truck mirrors with, like blind spot checkers on them but also if you take them off you know, uh, it's like can you get pulled over for that no no so the rule is what? that cars must ship with the side mirrors. The rule is not that you must drive oh, with side mirrors. God. Yeah. What a loophole. And so, so when and you put don't... your blinker on, the camera feed from the fender shows you what you would have seen if you looked at your mirror. Mm-hmm. And so and that already shows up on Tesla. Yeah. Like people are used to checking the screen. Right. And so if you just remove the mirrors from the truck. No, I, I should say it's reasonably you could safely pilot this car with no mirrors. I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure. But. It was just weird to have someone at Tesla be like, yeah, you could take off the mirrors, and if you hit something, that's on you. It just feels weird to look to the right at my screen to merge left. Yeah, That's like, true. I know I could do that, and yeah. maybe people would get used to it. And I have heard good things about, like, camera feeds instead of mirrors, like yep. uh, the Polestar 4 that we were talking about last week or the week before, yeah. having no rear view window. The, this is, we got to talk about that, too. The truck that we drove had no rear rear view mirror oh the, the cyber truck doesn't either it, so it does the cyber truck that we drove didn't have one it will actually have one when you buy it but when you you've seen the truck right yeah. when you close the tonneau cover yeah you completely shut off oh. that rear view but okay and so if you check that mirror you will not see behind you so there's a new reverse camera at the back of the truck that is constantly displayed okay. so that you can see behind you. Interesting. So this is one of those I described as a muscle memory remap, like the, which happens with Teslas all the time. Like in Model 3, people now, instead of checking right behind the steering wheel for your speed, have had to remap their glance to like right. the top of the other screen. Yeah. With the plaid, the yoke, the buttons on the yoke, like the horn and right. the blinkers are on right. the yoke. Now I've had to remap that for myself. With the Cybertruck, there's another one, which is you will not check the mirror nearly as often if your tonneau cover is closed. You can't see anything. Mm. You have to check the screen, which again is just a little lower, but it's that's where your rear view is mm-hmm. on the Cybertruck. But they're not doing like a digital rear view mirror like a lot of cars no. do. They are not. Okay, interesting. I kind of was hoping that they would. That would be Me cool. too. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I, I, you know, my a lot of my thoughts about the Cybertruck can sort of be summed up in like, it's not, and maybe you feel differently, Marquez, but it's not innovative, which sounds weird, right? Because they are like pushing a lot of boundaries. Right, it's a different shape. Well, yeah, well, it feels like they decided all of these boundaries and rules that they wanted to break because they thought it would be like fun and cool. And then they had to endlessly over engineer every single part of that truck to still make it work with those like initial ideas That's exactly in mind. How I feel. But it's right. not like it's not the next step in trucks. It's not the next step in in anything. It's just a really weird truck with a lot of really cool engineering to make to allow right. it to be weird and it's still the cover same, the bases. It's the same thing as like the Steve Jobs like I need it to do this and the engineers go that's not physically possible and he goes make it happen. And then yeah. they figure out ways to make it happen in ways that aren't really the original vision but they're still Yeah. I actually have a feature that speaks directly to to what you're saying. So I agree the truck isn't innovative in that it isn't actually capable of anything that there are other cars on the road couldn't do. It has autopilot the same way other Teslas have autopilot. 
it can carry the same amount of stuff. It has the same size bed, etc. There are other EV trucks that already exist. But I think what they realize is with this first generation of EV trucks, since none of them are technically capable of new things other than maybe a front trunk, you have to differentiate yourself. Yeah. And so that's Tesla's whole thing. They're like, look at how every other truck looks the same. Now look at how ours looks. Yeah. And so they are sort of engineering their way into a new form factor in right. that way. There is one crazy feature. Okay. Instead of enabling with a giant 240 kilowatt hour battery, some massive range and an ability to tow more or longer than every other EV truck, instead, it's 123 kilowatt hour battery. It's roughly the same. But there is an optional battery extender that you can buy and equip the truck with, and it will fit neatly in the trunk of the Cybertruck and add 120 miles of range. But it also adds all of the weight of more battery. So basically, Tesla's thought process is, mm, in this day in EVs, 300 miles is a good number, and we're gonna try to hit that because if we do actually try to hit 500 miles, it adds a, too much weight to the truck and it, it compromises too many other things with this truck. You become a 9,000 pound Hummer truck. So we're gonna have a normal weight and we're gonna have a normal 300 mile range, but if you are going to tow or do some hauling or road tripping and you do want to sacrifice the weight just to have that ability to do it, we'll sell you a huge battery pack that you put in the trunk of the So the, the battery gives you more range than it takes away for it being heavy. Exactly. How much does that cost, do you know? I don't know if I got a price for that. That's a good question. And is that hard to take in and out? Probably. Okay. Yeah. I feel <laughs> like that's couple, super heavy. Probably a couple thousand and pounds. And does it charge in like synchrony with the car when you're charging the car? I believe, I suspect based on what they told me, it'll act like just an extension of the car's battery pack. Interesting. Is there yeah. a 240 cool. outlet in the front? In the trunk. In the bed? In the bed. In the bed. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, and that's actually a good feature as well. Reverse charging. Reverse charging. Yeah. For your, to charge your home. Whatever you want. Yes. Or, <laughs> or another vehicle. Oh, are they releasing a cable too? Just like Lucid? I don't even think you need a special cable. It had a straight up 240 volt plug in the trunk that can do nine and a half kilowatts out. Oh, wow. So if you just have like the cable that you get with any EV that has a 240 volt, yeah. pop that thing in the Cybertruck trunk and it will literally charge whatever car. Okay, that's cool. We're making a short on that. I think so. <laughs> yeah. I think that's pretty sick. And then, they, no, they also said that the actual charge port itself would eventually be... Yeah. In and out as well. That you'll need a special box for, yeah. like maybe power your home yeah. or power or something okay. else. Okay, so like but the yeah. F-150 Lightning sort of. Exactly. Cool. So yeah. that's pretty cool. That is crazy. We need that's... to see what it's like on the road, though. Yeah. Or not on the road. We need to see what it's like in mass. You didn't you drive know? these on any roads or anything? No, no, we, we did. I more meant like, you know, it's like Marquez said, like we had one that was earmarked like for us and we all... Oh, I see. What we you're all liked it. You know yeah. what I mean? But I'm sure the first 10 that they deliver are also going to be as perfect as possible. You know, yeah. and then when there's 10,000 on the road and like God. all cars, they start getting into accidents. And like in all cars, there's going to eventually be a recall on one of the parts. And yeah, we're, we're going to have to see if, if its outlandish character is able to make it a comfortable thing that someone can own. So, an extremely you know? common thing that you have to do in New York City um, and specifically Brooklyn mm. is that people, the, the, the lanes are not that wide and people all the time double park and you have to sort of like squeeze between them because they're just double park for a That's long period of time. That's not going to happen with this. You literally will not There's be able no to way. do that. Not any different than any other truck out, full size truck out. How wide? Is it as wide as the Rivian? It's as wide as the F-150. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so maybe you could. It's as wide as the most popular vehicle in, on, in the United States. I don't know. There's okay. a Rivian in my neighborhood and it was just parked the other day because someone was double parked and it couldn't get around it. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> this is not to say that you should buy a pickup truck in New York City. <laughs> <laughs> Probably do shouldn't not. do that. Yeah. Do um, not. People but anyway. dimensions wise and practicality wise, okay. it does look insane, but physically, it, it's basically the same size as the most popular truck you can buy. I'm excited for us to get our review. How much it. does it weigh yeah. again? It weighs just under 7,000 pounds. Just under 7,000. Is it yeah. stainless steel? So that's a good question. It's technically, it's an alloy. It's a little bit more formable of an alloy than just pure stainless steel. But its finish looks just like a refrigerator. And <laughs> an interesting note about that is... <laughs> the, the soap. Just match yeah. LG refrigerator. So number one, cleaning materials are apparently slightly different. You just use like window cleaner instead of like... Are they software. selling a polishing cloth? He said any microfiber. Yeah. Oh, okay. So there won't be like a Tesla Apple 
collab no, no. polishing cloth. Probably not. Not collab, but there probably will be a Tesla. <laughs> yeah, there probably will be cloth. that cloth. Eventually. But the other weird thing about it is, I don't know if you remember the uh, the concept truck. It didn't have side view mirrors. This yeah. new truck has side view mirrors. Yeah. It didn't have a windshield wiper. Now this truck has a giant oh, windshield wiper. That's okay. But, Sorry, finish your stuff. But yes. I have another the, question. The concept didn't have door handles and neither did the truck. Whoa. So instead, there are small rectangular buttons. Actually, it's it's a pretty big button, but it's a button on the A pillar and the B pillar. And you press that button. What are button, the A and B pillars? Uh, between the front seat and the back seat, it's got that pillar. Oh, okay, okay. okay. So like right a where structural it, thing. Yeah. 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 Um, you press the button and it pops out the door by like two inches. And then, and then you, you grab the door and pull the rest of the way open. Yeah. This is all the doors on the truck. And my first question was like, what if it's iced over? Uh, and yeah. they immediately were like, yeah, we tested that. There's one in Alaska right now, and it'll push through an inch of ice. Whoa. That's what they told me. Dang. I don't know if it will, but hey, we're out here in the Northeast. We will probably be able to test that. We have that. another short. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they did demonstrate the the that the, the I forget if it was like um, a solenoid or a motor or whatever creates the force that opens the door, opens the door with enough force that you cannot physically hold it shut against the the I guess the, the opening. Yeah. yeah. It'll break the ice. Wow. It's, pretty it's cool. gonna break an, an inch of ice, it's gonna break your arms. So. Yeah. It, That's crazy. Well, no one's hopefully no one's holding it shut while unlocking it. Yeah. Challenge accepted. And it, it doesn't fly open. Uh, yeah, it but presents I, itself and it, you are right. Will it not open if it's like up against a wall or another car or something? Will it recognize that there's it's, something there? It's only like two inches, so it probably won't you won't be able to park that close okay. to something. Okay. Yeah. Challenge accepted. But the windshield wiper. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So this is an extremely widely debated thing. The Verge has been going hard on I this I have all of the answers. About whether or not is it one giant windshield wiper or is it multiple windshield Neil wipers. Neil has been tweeting about it for months. Yeah, they've been doing hard <laughs> reporting on the Neil windshield Neil this wiper. is for you. This is... As long as you can acknowledge that we're the, we're the flagship podcast of cyber truck reporting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> the Vox Media Cybertruck Flagship Network. Vox Media Cybertruck Podcast. So to answer that question... It's one windshield wiper, and it's one windshield, the world's largest piece, single piece of automotive glass. That was what they said. It's the biggest windshield I've ever seen. One windshield wiper? One huge windshield wiper. <laughs> Dude, Epic. it's... It is... Okay. Okay. This How thing... does it work? Okay, yes, yes. Yeah. Poorly. So it is stored up against the side of the truck, not flat. You know how most are stored like yeah. flat, like right under Wait, your so hood? so it wipes down? So it's up on the side, and yes, it wipes down <laughs> up, okay. right? It's fr it's probably five feet long. <laughs> <laughs> it's huge. huge. <laughs> but, okay, it's a big windshield wiper. All right. It totally, because the windshield goes over your head and the windshield is the entire windscreen, it actually totally covers the driver and actually covers probably 70% 75% of what the passenger That's what I was going to ask. That's so a little much, generous. Yeah. It's, I feel like I mean, if you're sitting in a passenger seat, you're not going to get much If it's going clean. quick enough, it's probably okay. So it reaches mm -hmm. the full other side of the windshield, but it yeah. doesn't go full coverage, obviously, because physics. Yeah. But it's a huge windshield wiper, right? A couple things about that. One, you're going to need a hell of a motor to like push this thing. I went to yeah. max speed. And I have a video of it, and it just, it's just a huge <laughs> windshield wiper moving. It's, How fast it's, does it go? Dude, it moves like a regular windshield wiper. Really? It's crazy. No it's way. Huge. That's crazy. The other How thing is about it pulling that that quickly? It's, it's got to be a crazy motor. And the other thing is the hub is, like, exposed. It's not, like, under the hood. So if this thing ices over, this thing is going to just be cranking so tons of snow off your windshield. How does it spray the windshield <laughs> cleaner? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent question. It's crazy. Great question. <laughs> this giant windshield wiper is also hollow enough on the inside that oh, no, way. no yes. way. There no is way. a pump underneath it that when you first press the button to like spray your windshield, it takes a beat to pump the entire thing full of windshield wiper cleaner, and then it sends the windshield down, and then there's like 10 holes on the wiper blade that all spray <laughs> as it goes back to the top. Wow. I'll put it, I'll show you the video. That's amazing. I'll show you the video yeah. right now. I got the, it on my phone. The first, the, the first like upward stroke is dry. It sprays. Because it's still pumping it full of windshield wiper it, fluid. Dude, that's so This funny. is what I mean when I say it's not an innovative truck. Wait, There's so a lot of new things in this truck, but they're workarounds they're for this like if stupid it, shape that is. If it flies up that quickly, it probably doesn't even need to pump any liquid because the like motion will just send force. the liquid up. Yes, but... Uh, 
You know, I wasn't I'm there. Ready. So when we pulled up to the parking lot, I'm just going to talk while they're yeah. They're Marquez doing is this. showing David the video of the windshield wiper. Yeah, <laughs> you, dude, it's so funny. It looks like a samurai. What? Like it's like a katana. <laughs> it does. Like, it really sh- does. Okay, wait, Alice, what are you saying? It. Uh, so we pull up to the the Giga factory, and we're in this lot where there's like seven or eight. Wow. cyber trucks okay that is also where we were able to look around and see that the panel gaps on these different trucks were like not exactly the same mm. um but a lot of these trucks were just covered in dirt like serious serious off-roading had yeah, been shot of that too. done in them and in all the ones that had dirty windshields you could see where the wiper had been wiping <laughs> was it a clean windshield Mm-hmm. Not the cleanest. Again, I I didn't. I, that dirt could have made it there after the last wipe. They could have dirtied it to make them look cooler for us. There's like an endless number of explanations for what actually happened. But on the ones that did have a clean windshield where you could tell the wiper actually did work, the you were right. The passenger side is still just <laughs> caked. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Sixty yeah. percent. Yeah. We have one really cool shot from the video um, where uh, we were doing it with out a uh nd filter without a polarizer outside and you can see and we're driving on this narrow uh road through these woods and you can see the reflections of the trees and the clouds and the sky on that big glass panel and even the stainless steel is reflective and you can see it and it's you're just like oh <laughs> Wait, this is cool what's gonna happen when the sun is shining directly at the car oh it shines right in your eyes it <laughs> hooks you <laughs> yeah. yeah the yeah. reflections off this truck are nutty yeah no. it's because it's flat too no. like a lot of cars are like curved so you'll only get like a, a, a glance oh, of the sun you like, get pew. specular diffusion on this one if you stand in the wrong place you're just gonna get blasted with the reflection <laughs> yeah. until you move yeah do you think it's gonna blind drivers like driving by them and stuff there are gonna be angles where yeah it's gonna gonna be a problem and that's what i mean when i say we need to see what happens when these things are actually being delivered because in isolation when it's just one truck statistically it probably will never come up as a problem but when there's someone's retinas ten thousand on the road we might get a little uh yeah yeah it's like a million pre-orders if they all go through, yeah. And well, the, the price is way higher. It's a very than it was different price. Slated at, yeah. yeah, and it's also three years later. Or Are you keeping yours, Marcus? So, now that you've driven it, now that I've driven it, now that I've seen it, had it for a day, I will say that. Yes, there are some downsides, but I think the crazy advantages that it has, the crazy s- nimble steering radius, and the the way it drives, was enough for me to keep my pre order. And like, wait till I have one and fully evaluate it and then decide between keeping that or the Rivian. I'm Mm. still not sure which one it's going to be. They each have their advantages, but I'm I'm much more curious now about working with the Cybertruck because it has a tow hitch. It has the six foot bed, which is bigger than the Rivian bed. It's got the power outlets in the trunk. It's got the, you know, dampened opening. I stood on top of the tonneau cover. It's fine. Like it has a motorized tonneau cover. The tonneau cover is the back cover that goes over the bed. Over the bed. Yep. You can open it or close it any amount you want you can stand on it you can you know trust that things inside are, are secure uh the, the back seats all fold up oh and so there's a whole bunch of room on the floor that you can like oh, put cool. things tripods is it two up. or three row it's two rows two row uh two full-size rows so comfy back seats yeah comfortable heated back seats mm. um yeah like a, a lot a lot of good things going for it so I, i'm they're comparable in a lot of ways. Okay. I, um, is the screen on the inside, is it recta- is it uh, lengthwise longer or is it taller? It is the biggest truck Tesla's ever made, and it's also the biggest screen they've ever put in a truck. It's really? 18 inches diagonally. Whoa! Damn. So it's the same aspect ratio as normal, just bigger. Dang. Yeah. Big big screen. It's got a 9-inch screen in the back, also the biggest they've ever put in the back. Can you also play Cyberpunk on it? I haven't. Does it have the same GPU structure as the um, that I'm not sure as about. the Plaid? What is I the 5G modem in the car? <laughs> <laughs> it didn't get that far. It will not go through the metal. <laughs> Ours was in like a dark mode by default too, and I I didn't know Tesla's had a usually dark that's mode. based on time of day. But but for yeah, us it was dark all day. day. I didn't. Was there a light mode? No, I, I'm pretty sure when he we were shooting during switch. the day, it was... You might be able to pick. Yeah, it was dark the whole time. Yeah. I don't know if there was a light mode in the software. I'm not sure either. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. It was a very... It looks exactly like your car's UI. Just, like, change all of the fonts to look cyber oh, and no. change all of the curves to <laughs> oh, be no. squares. Is it, like, a bad Android skin? It's actually pretty good. 
Really? It's it's pretty tasteful. They okay. didn't go too crazy. Okay. Other than the whole like this the logo. beast mode thing. Cerber Truck. What's oh, the yeah. beast mode? That's oh, like yeah. the Oh yeah, tell us about the beast mode. The triple motor cyber truck, they're sort of informally calling the beast. Okay. Um <laughs> sorry, Polestar. <laughs> yeah. Polestar BST also stands for beast. I don't know if we knew that, but I did not. Um also there are, when I was nine and I was running really fast. Yeah. <laughs> There are three drive modes in the Beast. Comfort. <laughs> comfort Beast. Sport. <laughs> yeah. I think it's Comfort, Sport, and Beast. Yeah, I think so, comfort. yeah. Or, or the, 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 yeah. Instead of Sport, it might be Performance. Something like that. And then the highest end is called Beast. Yeah, beast. highest end is okay, Beast. Okay, and is that just like the most acceleration, the most torque, the yes. most... Okay. Did the you most... drive it in that mode? I did drive it in that nice. mode. It blew my face off, man. It's like, Dude. It's fast. It's yeah. like getting kicked. It's very fast. But it's not as fast as the... The, the plaid? Uh, plaid. Nothing is that's one point. <laughs> no. Yeah. Okay. But it is the Isn't fastest. Isn't the Nevera faster than the plaid? Yes. Tech, okay. So the, that the the Nevera is the fastest production car ever made. Yeah. Quickest. Sorry. Great. Quickest. 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 Um, zero to sixty. Zero to one hundred. Zero to two hundred. The plaid is the fastest one mere mortals can buy. <laughs> right. And this is the fastest pickup truck any factory has ever made. Okay. Sheesh. Yeah. It's crazy. Dang. Like I don't know the top speed, but if it does an eleven second quarter mile. It's probably pretty fast. I think it's pretty At fast. At the risk yeah. of sounding like a shill, this sounds pretty dope. <laughs> <laughs> if they You're nailed everything. You're allowed to like some parts of it. You it guys definitely, are talking about. My number one concern with it and at the same time kind of one of its advantages is visibility because there's nuance to visibility. You can see everything. The huge glass canopy in front of you, over your head, like behind you, the, the, the triangle window yeah. up at the front pillar, like... You can see all around you amazingly well. No blind spots other than right in front of you. <laughs> you cannot see what's right in front of you. Oh, my God. There's a new front-facing camera, Oh, and you can pull it up in the software at any time, and there's still no 360 view in Teslas, which I don't know uh, how they haven't done this yet. It's they so... have the cameras for it. So get to it, Tesla. Yeah, people, are it. Get, people get blown away by that feature. Stitch them together. It can't yeah. be that hard. Stitch Everyone else it. does it. But... You can't see what's right in front of the nose of the truck. You just can't. Nope, that's bad. It's just the distance between you and the front of the windshield. You can put like a pizza box <laughs> in the front of this car. Not yeah. exaggerating. Like picture a pizza box. Yeah. Picture it putting it behind your steering wheel. Like opened up? Yeah. <laughs> like a pizza, like, like a full... open it up. No, open it up like the oh. angle of a cyber okay, truck gotcha, windshield. Okay, gotcha, 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 gotcha. So a you, you're a f long way okay. from the front of the windshield, and then at the front of the windshield, there's a little front trunk and then a shelf. I cannot tell you if there's a child standing in front of the side. I was going to say, this nope. is not going to help the running over kids thing. I cannot tell what's in front of it, mm -hmm. unless I have the camera feed open. You okay. even, you even asked them. Auto, it doesn't auto open the camera feed if there is something in front of you? No. If you reverse, yes. <clears throat> right. And there's a button always to pull up the camera feed. But if I don't have the camera feed open, I can't tell. I feel like they should have sensors in the front that well, see if something's really close to you. I'm sure if it, it becomes an issue, they can like push a firmware update or something. That would do that. They should yeah. do that yeah. preemptively. Yeah, just like they always have the review issue. camera. They should probably in the front at low speeds have the front camera. Yeah, also. that'd be smart. No, yeah. it, it definitely is. That was one of the first things you said when you got behind the wheel. You were like, "Where are the edges of this truck?" And they they were giving you these tricks like, "Oh, use like the corner of the windshield and like." And then I actually oh I went out. and I was like, "Marquez, this is where the edge of the truck is." Like I held my arm up like a little flag. <laughs> yeah. Um. Can't. And it can't, still yeah. was like not. Especially the corners. Yeah, like which are cool. sharp. Yeah, which are really sharp. You know, they so, cut, can they cut you? Uh, yeah. Pro probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you could cut yourself on a on the corners. On the edge. Yeah. yeah. Dang. The Rivian has a similar thing with the gear tunnel, but that's only when it's open. Right. Like when you open the gear tunnel, there's like a sharp corner. People have cut themselves on that all the time. We put Tim through there. Yeah. So when you the door, the oh. door of the gear tunnel. Yeah. It's yeah. like shaped like this, and yeah. then that, then that right uh -oh. angle piece. It's sharp. You can just hit your knee on it and cut yourself. Dang. Anyway, we've talked a lot about the truck. Yeah. I think... Um, Anything else about it that you're stoked on or hate? I hate that it just feels like... And I'm using the word vehicle here figuratively, not literally. But I just hate that it feels like a vehicle for people to be their most dangerous, least thoughtful selves. That's what pickups are, Ellis. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you said it, not me. So everyone can go after him. But yeah, that that's my big thing. Is is it really feels like it's so, it's so cool. The the eleven year old in me is so stoked. It sounds awesome. It feels awesome. And is it good for all of us? 
No, it's <laughs> not. It's not. Did they say anything about when they're going to start making like more mass deliveries of it? No, that'll be a surprise to all of us. I think what they're going to start projecting at this event, I'm guessing, is here are our first deliveries. Yeah. It is whatever 10 to 20 of these things, and we are about to go through a production ramp to try to get as many of these out the door as possible, but that probably means 10 this week, 15 next week, 40 the next week. Wow. <laughs> it's going to be a slow ramp. Yeah, right. Adam, I think we're winning this bet. I was just going to say, yeah. I want to note, we are recording this on Wednesday, the day before the event. And it was oh, 20. 20. 25. 25 was the bet. 25 was the bet. They're not, so they're the not listener knows who non-employees. By the yeah, end yeah. of the year. Yep. Yeah. No, I'm, so I'm, there's I feel all of that. December that's to true. deliver 25. That's uh, one that's a day. That's true. That's true. That's one a day. Yeah, okay, so we'll we'll, well update. They're doing ten the on Thursday. Don't count me on thirty days. <laughs> <laughs> they could do it. You've tried yeah. thirty ways, <laughs> but one day there will be a lot of these cars on the road. Yeah, yeah. Dang. I, I did appreciate, and then we can wrap up cyber stuff cyber, after you talk cyber about your Monday? your conspiracy theory. <laughs> cyber Thursday. Oh my! Cons- yeah, that's so much better. I was about to say something boring. Uh, yeah. I'm okay, ready. I have this conspiracy <laughs> theory oh, <God>. based <laughs> around. We? The Waveform trivia, the Waveform podcast, we love spreading conspiracy. Yeah. Things. So everybody, put on oh your tinfoil hats. <laughs> Do we have any conspiracy music? I'm going to add it in post. Don't yeah. worry. Um, Ellis I'll, has they'll covered. play some conspiracy music. We, but yeah. So do. the late rapper DMX, RIP. We all love DMX on his legendary 2007 album. 2007. Uh, it was called Pick Up the Litter, right? Actually, I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, never mind. What I am Don't call me. Sorry, DMX fans. I think I got that they wrong. they are taking care of my cat. Anyway, we all love the song. Oh, pff. thanks. Do you want to say it again? I totally just oh, talked over you. That's I'm what sorry. I'm always telling my friends when they're taking care of my cats. Oh, my pick God. up the litter. Nope. <laughs> pick up the litter. Oh, pick up the litter. Guys, <laughs> this is going so far no, left. Somebody told... <laughs> okay, just Legendary <laughs> New York rapper DMX. We all love him. Uh, on his song, X Gonna Give It To You. Which many people know. Many people famously know. Famously in many, many uh, movies and also in Rick and Morty, which was how I learned about it I didn't in know college. Rick and Morty. Yeah. You learned about it from Rick and Morty? I did. Oh. Okay. Anyway, continue. My conspiracy theory. <laughs> I think the song X Gonna Give It To You by DMX is actually about the Cybertruck. So and you're saying he knew something that we didn't know. In 2007. Like. Yeah. He knew like way more about this because, look... X gonna give it to you. Okay, X the platform. There we go. X the platform. X the Elon, just sort of going general to give thing. It to you. Okay, going to give you the Cybertruck. <laughs> Waiting for you to get it on your own. X going to deliver to you. Oh, making deliveries. Delivery event. Delivery event coming up. <laughs> okay. Knock knock. Open up the door. It's real. It's real. It, we none of us thought it was real for years. Yeah. All of a sudden, knock knock. Open up the door. It's real. Open With the nonstop door. pop pop from stainless steel. Pop, the finish. Pop. Jesus. <laughs> And of the truck and pop pop like the one that they shot with the gun exactly pop pop on exactly the so uh yeah i just i think we should all go back and listen to dmx's x gonna give it to you and really think hard because i really do think this we can't was about do that without getting demonetized so cyber, you should do it cyber truck yeah wow i think that Great conspiracy he, theory. Uh, he had something what yes. was that 2007 I thought it 2002. was 2002. 2002. Oh, thank wow. you. Yeah, the album I initially pulled it up wow. on was a compilation. Twenty-one of years ago, it can finally. I'm gonna, yeah. listen. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go through the rest of the lyrics and see if I can find hints at future Tesla products. Maybe there's some roads to references in that DNA <laughs> yeah, song. But it's like in 2029, the roadster is looking fine. Yeah. <laughs> if that's one of the lyrics, <laughs> that's all we need to know. Uh, okay, okay, let's take a quick break. Right. I do want to go over the Spotify wrapped for this this year on Waveform, yeah. so we'll take a break and look at that. But before but, uh, that, trivia. trivia. Ellis, is trivia. this your trivia question, too? Do you, do you stay you on this side? Do it, Ellis. Yeah, do just it. tell us here, from here. Tell us from here. All right, let's keep it rolling with the geology questions oh, God. today. I didn't Hell even yeah. take geology class like Marquez. In, G- in, in Igneous. What are the other ones? What? What? Igneous? Ig- <laughs> I can tell you a lot about black holes, but I cannot tell you anything Obsidian about Obsidian is planet. one of them. No. no. <laughs> Obsidian, Obsidian is, is, is an igneous. Ob- uh, no, Obsidian is, is an igneous rock. Yes, yes, it, is. it is an igneous rock, what but it is not is another an kind of rock. rock. <laughs> it's a rock formed by the cooling of magma, David. Come on, Don't David. You know. with it. Anyway, uh, let's okay, continue. Hit the most abundant element in the air we breathe is nitrogen. Mm-hmm. Number two is oxygen. What is the third most abundant element in the air we breathe? Marquez is pumping the air right That's now. That's not geology. 
No, it's not. Also, yeah, it is. I, that's just chemistry. No, it's not. It's about the atmosphere. That's geology, isn't it? Isn't no, atmosphere geology, part of geology? Geology is Earth. is Earth. Yeah, we. the air and the, the atmosphere is part of Earth. Uh, I didn't write this question. I think solids are part of Earth. I don't want to throw you under the bus because I had an airplane brain and couldn't come up with a question this week and Adam kind of <laughs> stepped in. But I'm with you. This isn't, geo- this is, this isn't geology. Can you ask a question like, what was David's job before this? <laughs> <laughs> so I can actually get some Unfortunately, points. we can't repeat questions. So we're locking <laughs> yeah. those questions in. We'll hit them after the break. Uh, Be right back. All right, welcome back. We got one last little thing for uh, for you guys on Waveform, which is basically a shout out to you, the listeners, the listeners, to thank you for listening. And Spotify Wrapped came out this week. A lot of people were sharing them. Did you get you? Do you? I got mine. Yeah, yeah. I use Spotify. So I I noticed a lot of people were sharing. I was like the number one hundred user of Spotify in the United States. Oh, nice. I still have the email. Fun fact. Little yeah. early adopter badge you should get. Mm-hmm. I noticed a lot of people were sharing their Spotify Wrapped with like an asterisk of like, I only listened. In the car. That's why it's this weird <laughs> right. artist. I thought like everyone had like some some disclaimer for why they didn't like their. I'm Spotify. proud of my music. I, I think you should. You guys. I think you should own it. Is yeah. what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Uh, but what we did get is a Spotify Wrapped, as we do every year, from the perspective of the uploader, which because cool. we upload this podcast to Spotify. Yeah. Which is where many of you listen, and so now I'm going to step through the best of what it's telling me about you guys. Keep in mind, this is only Spotify. Obviously, if yes. you are like looking at me point at you right now, then you're viewing this, which means you're on yeah, YouTube. YouTube. YouTube should do YouTube rewind, rewind <laughs> but like wrapped. I want to know how yeah. many minutes of videos I watched. Mm-hmm. I want to know which uploader I watched the most minutes from. Yeah. I want to know whose videos I watched the most of during the year. Yeah. Lo-fi girl. I, I want to know what video I watched <laughs> the most times. Did yeah. I repeat watch a video? Mm-hmm. I Come on. I, I want that a lot more than what you, <laughs> YouTube Rewind used to be. <laughs> yeah. They should they should take the opportunity to own the Rewind branding and I make it something awesome. I agree. People would like that. It's a free idea, YouTube. I'll just take 10%. It's fine. It's great. Just do it by tomorrow. Just do it. Okay. Okay. Um, so in 2023, people listen to the Waveform podcast on Spotify. Scrolling in, what does it want to tell me? This is the first time I'm seeing this as well. I listen on Pocket Cast, just so you know. Oh, so screw Spotify. I'm not part of this. <laughs> <laughs> so from the top. Yeah. Thoughts on, oh, our number one episode of the entire year was Apple Vision Pro and WWDC 2023. I'm, I'm shocked. Yeah, I, I would This does that. not surprise me. <laughs> I'm shocked. It was streamed 517% more than your average episode. <sighs> wow. So five times the usual. Dang. That's impressive. Sheesh. Okay. Uh, next slide, let's hear for the new fans. Okay, some of you are new. 40% of your listeners discovered you in 2023. Wow. Wow. Nice. That makes sense. We had like an explosion of traffic. This a lot of year. new people. And thank you for that, by the way. Yeah. I think that's probably also true about the YouTube stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, 5% of our listeners started with the iPhone 15. As their first phone as ever? As their first <laughs> <laughs> episode ever. <laughs> okay. Which is pretty cool. Oh, I wow, believe that as well. Wait, how many percent? 5% of, our 5%. People, of all of our people here. Okay. Well, yeah, that sounds all right. Spotify. Then it says, how does it feel to have gone global? The United States was your top country with... 36% total streams, but nice. we were streamed in 153 countries. Dang. What? Wait, show your question. How many countries are there? There are between 190 and 200 countries-ish, depending okay. on who you ask. Okay. So 153. That's the, wow. only, the thing that I always get surprised by when I look at YouTube analytics is Dang. like, many of these countries are not majority English-speaking countries. So there are people who are just like, Listening to the podcast in countries we never would have thought. They just of. love to hear pretty awesome. It's pretty yeah. sick. So like a seventy five percent ish of countries listen to Waveform. That's awesome. That's pretty awesome. Wow, yeah. that's insane. That's crazy. <laughs> you want the top five list? Yeah, countries. Can I guess? Can, oh, uh, damn, I wanted to guess too. Oh, let's alternate guesses. Okay. You do, number one. Well, number one's the U.S. You already said that. Correct. Oh. Number two, India. Correct. Number three, the U.K. Incorrect. Is it Germany? Correct. Number four. Um, the Philippines? Incorrect. Oh, dang. Shout out to the Philippines. South Korea. Incorrect. <laughs> no. Think think closer. Mexico. Brazil. Even closer. Canada. Canada, correct. Uh, oh. And then five. The Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> Incorrect. Dang. Go east. East. Sorry, no. It doesn't matter which way you go. Go west. West. From the Philippines. Iceland. 
Uh, no, from the Philippines. Oh, wait, right. oh. where are you? No, <laughs> wait, in my head. sorry. Okay, start in Canada. Start in Canada. <laughs> okay, go east. Iceland. <laughs> okay, go south. South. Um, Greenland. No, no, that's to the that's to the west. Uh, um, the UK. Geology. Yeah, yeah. Uh, nice. Top five. Okay, so that was U.S., India, Germany, Canada, more, Canada, and UK. Okay, okay. top five most cool. used, uh, most popular countries. Listen to Waveform. Shout out to all of those guys and girls. Our listeners have good taste. So, uh, what else are they into? Sorry, this it's it's giving me much more generic answers. Your listeners' top podcast genres <laughs> genres were number one comedy, number two news, number three sports. Wait, what about that's technology? About right. Not in there. <laughs> what? <laughs> I think that's. I think we're technically news. No way. Because no, no, we're, 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 we're comedy we're te- for sure. No, we're. I mean, we're listed in all the technology charts. Does so so Spotify I, have a technology chart? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay. Maybe it doesn't count because it's like other stuff that they. Or listen maybe to. we're the only tech podcast that they need to listen to. We're the flagship technology podcast <laughs> in in existence. Okay, so our listeners' top music genres. Okay. Wait. Should, I, should we guess again? It's so generic. It's not even pop. worth guessing. Yes. Number one, pop. Number two, rock. rap. Number three, oh. rock. Okay. <laughs> Learn nothing there. Thanks, Spotify. Uh, <laughs> your listeners definitely told their friends about you. What does that mean? They shared the podcast? Probably. Oh, yeah. Here's how they shared the podcast. 51%. Direct link. Nice. 18%. WhatsApp. WhatsApp. I knew it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> 13%. Text message. Nice. Wait, SMS or RCS? SMS. Definitely Te- Could SMS. be either. Could Damn. be either. No, probably. 12% other, 6% Instagram. Okay. Huh. Instagram. That's Instagram stories and uh, Instagram DM, direct DMs. Most shared episode was I Can and the Seven Keys to the What? Internet. Go, baby. Really? Yeah. That's Bingo. epic. That's epic. That's sick. Wow. If you guys haven't seen I Can and the Seven Keys of the Internet, it's a banger. That's really, I mean, not surprising, but I assumed (laughs) that the secret history of the internet would have been the more popular episode. The I Can and the Seven Keys of the Internet, that is a niche topic. That one's like a more topic. wild one. Yeah. yeah, but that's why you share it more. Lots, a lot of WhatsApp crazy. messages that's about true, that. Yeah. yeah, whenever you hear whenever you hear like a crazy podcast that you weren't expecting to hear, you share it. Yeah. A few yeah. weeks ago, my friend came up to me. He's like, dude, I just like heard about this thing. It's called like I Can. Have you ever? I was like, you have no idea. <laughs> 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 I can. We've been down. inside. Literally. I can. Cool. So, uh, okay. our podcast rating was a 4.9 out of 5. Nice. Appreciate you. Out of 5 or out of 10. Oh. Just kidding. Out of 5. <laughs> My heart sunk. Of, it is out of 5. It oh, is 4.9? Yeah, that's like the pretty Wait, good... who rated us? Oh. Anyone on Spotify? Anyone on Spotify? Okay. Yeah, I thought yeah, you yeah. meant Spotify rated us. Oh, no. And like, then, uh, trash. it's quizzing me which episode do you think got the most audience engagement? iPhone 15 and USB-C everything. Correct. <laughs> Nothing copies MKBHD. No. The objective top 10 phones list. Oh, damn. Those are some bangers. I'm Probably going with A. C. I'm just torn between A and C. Yeah. I'm going to pick C. AC power or DC nope. power? It's A. It's A. iPhone yeah. 15 yeah. Yep. and USB-C that everything. That makes more sense. How did Very Spotify know to pick the one that we were expecting a lot of comments Probably the on. top three. Yeah. yeah. Probably. Probably. You hit the charts in seven countries and peaked at number three. That's Bronze super ain't cool. bad. Yeah. You charted for 43 weeks. That puts you in the top 1% of charted podcasts. That's thanks to you guys. Appreciate y'all. We, uh, we did grow 22% in listenership, 61% in total streams, 19% in total followers, and 29% in minutes of created content. What does that mean? That means we had some bonus episodes. Oh, More nice. than we did last year. So uh, time to give a shout out to our biggest fans. Okay. We are a top 10 podcast for 91,000 of you. Thanks. And we are a top five podcast for 70,000 of those people. Dang. And we are, I'm, I'm guessing it's going to say number one for number some one. amount of people. He was We are the one. number one podcast for 22,000 of those people. Who have been tweeting at us all day. So <laughs> we love you guys. Yeah, we see awesome. them. Physically see you on They've been threading at Twitter. us too. I don't know if you noticed A that. little bit. A couple oh, threads yeah. here and there. A couple threads. That's pretty sick. So that's it. That is Waveform on, on Spotify this year. Uh, we appreciate that. And everyone who's been watching, listening all year. We still have a whole month of tech se- tech September. So uh, stay tuned oh, for that. September, you're right. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. <clears throat> we'll see y'all on the other end of that. Yeah. Also, to all the YouTube viewers out there, 
<coughs> Thank you as well. We see you. I know we don't have. Well, we I know don't, YouTube. You see us, but yeah, YouTube should really do like we a, metaphorically see you like you, a wrapped thing. I think next year YouTube will do it. That's what I said last year. I suggested I like, this last year. Yeah, you suggested it last no. year, and I was like, "There's no way they don't do this next year." They're a small. I team. mean, there's still 30 days, so we'll see. There's, there's still time. There's there there's still time. A lot of people doing. Not everyone stuff. has to drop stuff right now. Yeah, That's end true. of the year stuff should be November. I get I get scroogey about that. There is the thing though that like scroogey. I'll be real. <clears throat> I don't want to see my YouTube rewind. <laughs> I watch so much YouTube. But don't you want to like? Nope. <laughs> Nope. We'll learn about yourself. Nope. 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 <laughs> Don't need to see it. I will. It will only inspire guilt, and it, and it will remove AdSense from my favorite creators' pockets. Oh man! It, you don't have to pay for therapy if you nope, just nope, go nope. to YouTube Rewind. Oh. Learn a lot about yourself. YouTube University. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Trivia. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. I'm hoping. Trivia. I'm, I'm Does it hoping really have to be geology. Yeah, I'm hoping yeah. I'm right about some this. updates on the score. No. Marquez with 15, Andrew with 12, which has not changed since he went on paternity leave. David with one, two, carry the one, 14. What was David's last job? What was David's <laughs> last? Wait, job? So I need both of these to catch David. <laughs> no, I'm behind you by one. Yeah. Oh, what I have? I'm you 14. have 15. Oh, oh. I David has 12. Andrew's at 12. Oh, Andrew has 12. Okay. Yeah. First question. But Andrew's being extra screwed, so I guess I can't really complain that much. Yeah. Until. Trivia finale extravaganza where Ellis and I just cause chaos. So, first question. <laughs> the top layer of our planet is uh. called the crust and goes 25 miles deep. Correct. It contains all known life in the universe. Fun fact. What? Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Do you know of more? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not allowed to say. Sorry. <laughs> what are the three layers? They are the crust, the mantle, and the what? Are you smarter than a fifth grader? This is <laughs> yeah. exactly no. where this question's from. I'm not. Also, there's like, I think technically like seven layers, something like that. But we're, we're going with the basic three, so don't yell at me. Earth is a seven-layer cake? Something like that. Huh. David, you have your thinking hat on? How you feeling? <clears throat> <laughs> I'm so curious what you wrote. <laughs> me too. <laughs> I can't wait to see what you wrote. <laughs> okay, flip them and read. What do you got? Core. Yeah. The yeah. molten core. Core. Oh, Correct. I just realized that in the last 15 seconds. <laughs> Dang it. Okay. Uh, nice. It's like a, because I was thinking about like apricots, you know? That's a pit, David. Well, you could call it a pit. Yeah. You could call it a pit. I was thinking of core pit. Android services. Fair enough. I was thinking of core services for yeah. sure. Before I do this next trivia question, I want to give a quick shout out. Hundreds, if not thousands of you tweeted uh, DM'd, commented uh, the difference between end-to-end encryption and encryption in transit. Just like I asked, one of you uh, put it in a really, really beautiful, clear, easy-to-read way. And I'm a huge fan of beautiful, easy, clear explanations. Do you have the comment you could read? I do. And it's from uh, Twitter user Pranav Tiwari. Just wanted to say thank you. I'm not going to, you know, he divided it into three tweets. I'm not going to read all three. But essentially is all these messaging services, RCS... Uh, Android chatter. I don't know what you what, what you people use. Um, iMessage, Telegram. whatever. <clears throat> Telegram signal. They, there's all sort of a central... Various levels of encryption. No, I was going to say like a server. Oh. And when you're messaging someone, your message is going to that server and yeah. then it's going. So Being encryption re-writing. in transit is where the server has a key, you have a key, you type a message, it gets encrypted, the server gets it, the server decrypts it, and then re-encrypts it to send to the final person who has a separate set of keys that's shared between them and the central server. And if you want to know about encryption keys, watch our episode. Watch our most, our most shared episode of Waveform, I can in the seven keys of the internet. Bingo, let's go. Bingo, let's go. Um, encryption, end-to-end encryption, is where you and the final destination party have keys that correspond with one another so when it goes through it it is never decrypted by the messaging services server Hmm. that's the difference i also have a correction the spoon album i was recently uh i was referencing recently is not called hot um hot rocks rocks it's called hot thoughts Mm. that's so different maybe we can get them on a call and see if we could you know change it around it's a banger of a song and an album the most abundant element in the air we breathe is nitrogen. That's correct. Number two, oxygen. That's correct. Number three is what? Helium. 
That would be funny. Iron. For yeah, my apartment, it's iron. <laughs> <laughs> Iron's not a gas station. All right. <laughs> Noble gases. Flip them and read. Uh, I'm going to be laughed at right now. Oh. What did you say? We uh, both put we hydrogen. We both put hydrogen. Carbon is solid. Carbon is solid. Carbon. Is it nitrogen? Not necessarily. Wait, that was that was one of them. You that said, was right? one. Carbon dioxide. Is it, is, is it really helium? No. Is it? Wait, hold on. Wait, so it was Think about nitrogen? the noble gases. Noble gases. You said noble gas. It is a noble gas. Yeah, which means it's lighter than six protons. No, it means that it's very technical stuff for noble gases. It means that its outer shell of electrons is completely full. You can't have you can't oh. more. In. So sorry, it's nitrogen one. Nitrogen one. Oxygen. Oxygen two. Oxygen two. And it's not hydrogen carbon. It's not helium. It's not... It's like... I'll give you a hint. Boron or something. It's no, it's I'll not give you boron. a hint. <laughs> I really wanted some dried mangoes, but I can't have any because Where they, they... Are thrown out. They're out. Out of date. Out of... They... Uh, oxidized. Oxidized. They... They... Uh, they are gone. It's argon. <laughs> argon is a gas. Yes. Damn. Oh, that hurt. Sorry. <laughs> that really hurt. Wait. It is the third most common gas that we inhale. What wow. Does that do to your like body. Only Helps you live. Marquez is double checking. <laughs> He's fact checking you. <laughs> He's like, I'm not a chemist, but. I have another trivia question if you want to try it. No. I do. All right. We've been talking a lot about renewable energy like lately. I Marquez and I had the exact same answers because we're the same person with the same voice. Continue. Sorry. Do we really want to do another one? I was right about carbon dioxide, but it's number four. Yeah. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. No, my other trivia question was so bad that Adam wrote this one so we didn't have to do it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so you're asking the bad one now? No, I'm not going to ask the bad one. I mean, I will if you really want me to, but it's it's bad. What makes it bad? Is it, like, hard? You'll or? just never get it. It's fun and clever, but you'll never get it. Well, yeah, tell it. It's about jazz. Oh, I might get it. Okay. You will. Okay. <laughs> I want to hear it anyway. Today we're talking a lot about renewable energy, which we usually measure in watts. <laughs> so for today's trivia question, I wanted to ask a question about jazz, specifically jazz drummer Jeff Tane Watts who loves to name his albums with puns on his own name. So which of the following is not a real Jeff Tain Watts album? A. Watts. B. Mega Watts. C. Citizen Tain. Or D. These are all real Jeff Tain Watts albums. <laughs> I hope it's D. D. Hope. It is D. Those are all real. <laughs> Wait, Jeff? so Watt and Megawatt? Are he has an what? album called Watts, he has an album called Megawatts, and he has an album called Citizen Tane. Citizen Tane. He also has albums called Detained in Amsterdam. He, <laughs> this dude is hilarious. All right, well, I think, you know, last week might have been one of the most consequential uh, insane weeks in tech in a long time, but we're finally getting the Cybertruck is actually a pretty big deal. Yeah, it feels just as chaotic. Yeah. Yeah, which is a good place to end it. So that's where we will. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks right. for thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Thanks for learning about Argon with me. And uh, we'll catch you guys very soon in the next one. But don't try to look for a podcast on Tuesday because we are gone. What? Because we, <laughs> we won't have an episode. It's a pun. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> anyway. Way from us produced by Ellis Rovin and Adam Molina. We are a part of the Vox Media Podcast New Network, and our intro outro music is by Vane Sill. I don't know anything about rocks, dude. All I know is about like pressure and turning into black holes.